So if you're a parent in the midst of a divorce, or even if you have been divorced for years, we have an urgent message for you today, because if you don't know how to talk to your children about your divorce in the right way, and there is a right way and a very, very wrong way, they're going to feel a, a heavy burden. They're going to internalize it, and they will blame themselves, always. I invited an expert back to our show who I believe has the best, most specific advice for families who are going through or living with the aftermath of divorce, Gary Newman. We're glad to have you back. Thank you. And so over the years, you say that, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of bad divorces, and one of the worst things parents do is criticize each other. Absolutely, process, right? yes. Yes, when they badmouth each other, uh, it causes them to question if they can love both each other. Kids should be able to love both parents. And if you say something bad about the other person, they feel disloyal to you if they actually love the other person. And they should never have to make that kind of choice. So that's one of the biggest mistakes. That's the biggest complaint that I get from kids, is putting down the other parent like that. OK, so you know many families unravel after an affair. Gary spent time with 11-year-old Daisy and her 7-year-old brother Chris who have a lot of feelings about their family's breakup. So what happened when they were married? They were nice. They were, like, nice and everything. And then they, she started to cheat on him and everything. She introduced me to him once. She introduced you to the guy? Uh -huh. To the boyfriend? Mm -hmm. Or guy or whatever. I don't whatever. know if he's a boyfriend or whatnot. But that, so that must have been very oh, yeah. weird. He asked you to lie to dad about a boyfriend or something like that? Did she yeah, he said that she would say that we just went somewhere. She tells us just to say, we just went to like a store or something and we actually went to go see her boyfriend or somebody. So you're, yeah, how are you feeling then? You're mm. feeling pretty. I was bad. feeling re really sad and very, very mad. Mad but, about what? Uh, I don't want her to have a boyfriend because she was already married. It's not right to be with another person mm. when you're married. Did you ever tell mom? What? Yeah, I told oh, her once Chris. or twice. What'd she say, Chris? She said, I don't kill. So can you tell me about that, knowing that, you know, this is going on and that you're got to be a part of it or know about it and stuff? Yeah, I don't Gosh. really want to be a part of it or anything. I don't even want to have anything to do, do with my mom. Because you're that angry? Oh, yeah, and then my dad said, if I don't talk about stuff like this, that I might explode in one day and everything. Not like. <laughs> yeah, I hope <laughs> well, your head won't blow off. Yes, no, I don't think that. Yeah. What does he mean, explode? Like, explode your feelings. Yeah, there you go. That's a good way to put it, Chris. Very good. You miss your mom? Yeah. She's very rude to her. I don't I want a nicer mother if I ever do get another mother. Mm -hmm. But it's still sad, I guess, that she's decided to not be here, right? Yep. Yeah. What's making you sad now? What are you thinking about? Think about this one day once we went to Daddy Land. Yeah, and what happens to me? My muscle went away. And I don't want him to go away. Right? You didn't want mom to go away, huh? That makes sense. It's, a t it's very sad to see her go away. Did you think you'd see her again? Have you seen her since then? So even though you're mad at her, you still wish that she would come back and be a good mom, huh? Tell me, Crystal. Tell me. Tell me about that. Tell me that what what you really what you really wish your mom would do. Be mother, nice. Be a nice mother and a very good mother. And never have a boyfriend again. Now we're all crying, but <laughs> it's okay. Daisy and Chris say they haven't seen their mother in over two years in over two years. You're doing a good job. That was really brave of you. Wasn't that brave of him, audience? And so brave of Daisy.
So brave of Daisy, who's taking on the mother role for him at 11 years old. So brave of both of you. You know, you speak to lots of other kids out there who feel exactly the same way you do. Lots of other kids are hurting exactly the same way you are, and you had the courage to say it on, on national television. And so a lot of kids feel this way. How can Jim, what can he do to help them? Well, first of all, understand that when you see all this sadness, we shouldn't be depressed about it. We should be upset if they don't express this. That's what it's all about here. Yeah. If he doesn't get this out, if they don't do this, imagine how numb and what has to happen to them internally. What happens is, especially for young boys, you know, girls become depressed and young boys t take these feelings. Flat line. Flat line and then have rage later yeah. on. They are enraged. That's why you so, so, see so many enraged young boys and men is because they're not allowed to express their feelings. So the most important part of being a parent is we have to remember, I get calls and emails all the time about, you know, what's the script? What do I say exactly to my kid? And what we have to remember is that we heal through love and connection. That's the magic of being human. If we all think back to something that's happened to us personally, we got through it and we felt better just because somebody talk to us. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is take the pressure off of yourself as a parent to say just the right words. Mm -hmm. It's the feeling. It's looking at these kids and saying, gosh, I know it hurts. It makes sense that it's sad. And I wish I could do something different. But we're a family, and we're going to get through this. And you can tell dad he's strong enough. He's big enough. Look at this guy. He is really <laughs> broad-shouldered, OK? He's there for you. And, and you can tell him anything. Good. Yeah. And, and that's the point. You just have to let them know that you get them. You really get them and understand them. Some of this, you know, just seeing the tape and stuff, I try to talk to them and tell them to come help, you know, talk to me about it if they ever want to and everything else. And this is the first time I've seen it from him, and it's, it's you, disturbing. You bring up a great point that many parents say, well, I said to my kid, if you ever have a problem, just come find me, come talk to me. That's too intense. You, we know how kids feel somewhat. So we need to go to them and say, you know something? I know this time is hard. Your mom's not here. I know it must be sad for you. Assume the feeling, and they'll come out with it. Some parents are afraid, well, if I say that, maybe they're not really sad, and I'm going to bring up something that they're not feeling. Ridiculous. They're feeling it inside. You're not putting it on them. So go to them. Because, because what I learned when you were here many years ago, kids are, first of all, they have like little vibrational antenna. Yes. They're feeling it even when you don't think they're feeling it. Yes. And they know something is going on even when you think they don't know, when you haven't spoken about it. And the thing about their little vibrational ante antenna, because you're a kid, the whole world revolves around you. And you think then it's your fault, that whatever went wrong was because of something you did. Well, like I said, children often blame themselves after divorce. They can also hold a secret belief that they can somehow fix things. Here's more of Gary's candid conversation with Chris and Daisy. What's it like to be hurt? I mean, what's it like to feel hurt when she says, I'm going to meet you? And she doesn't. And she doesn't. I mean, that makes me feel sad and everything. Like, I try to like the perfume on, so she I think I smell pretty, and then I tried to like put a little lipstick on. Not like dark lipstick, but light lipstick. So then she'll think I look pretty too. And then I try to put my hair up, even though I don't like putting it up. Because <laughs> if you do that... She'll, she might come back. And it doesn't work? Nope. I don't think it does. Nope, so it doesn't do you, work. So what do, you, what, do you, how do you, what do you say to yourself in your head when that doesn't work? I say, darn it! Why not? And I try, and I try, and I keep failing. Do you think there's anything you could have done about it, Chris? I used to go on my knees and give a puppy eyes, and it used to work. This time it didn't work. Um, yeah. You feel like you couldn't make it, couldn't make her stick around, huh? So do you feel sometimes that, that uh, you could have done something else to? What do you think about? Oh, I thought I could buy or something. Because I usually take the laundry out and stuff. So I used to get allowance for it. Then I got enough money to buy a, a um, 
a fake ring or like a fiddle finger and I I'm like, Dad, can I buy this? And Dad said, I'll think about it. You just thought maybe if you bought her the ring, maybe she'd stay? Mm -hmm. Did you ever buy the ring? Yeah, but she didn't want it. And it didn't make her come back. Well, in the past, you've heard me say, Never criticize the other parent, because when you criticize the other parent, you criticize your child's DNA. Here's an example where we break that cardinal rule. You see, children in these circumstances, we cannot have them feeling that they are somewhat responsible for the rejection from the parent who has abandoned them. So that's the time when we have to say to our children, it is wrong as a parent not to be there for your child. And we explain to them that sometimes Physical trauma, bruises and broken bones, you can see. Sometimes people have problems in their mind, and it limits them. And it stops parents from giving the love that children deserve. You guys are huggable enough. You are lovable enough. You should have, that's a good smile. You are pretty enough. <laughs> you are pretty You're, enough. You smell well enough. <laughs> Your dad is here because you guys are terrific, and you deserve to have two parents. And if you have this one, that's going to be good enough. You did not make her go away, and you cannot make her come back. Well, Gary asked Daisy to write a letter to her mom expressing her feelings. It's important to get the feelings out, whether or not her mother ever gets the letter or not. Right. It's, it's that expression. We must get that across. It, regardless of who it goes to, the expression itself is healing. OK. Will you read it for us? Yeah. OK. Dear Mom, I miss you so much. I wish you were here for our girls' day out, where we went shopping and got our nails done. I miss being... <laughs> let me read it. Let me read it for you, OK? You're doing good, but let me read it. It's OK if I read it? OK. I miss baking cookies as a family and you helping us do our homework. I still love you, Mom, but what you did in the past makes me not love you so much like I used to. <laughs> I just wish the divorce never happened and you never did what you did. Daddy always says, it's never my fault that you left. But sometimes I think it is. I know someday you will regret it and I hope you've learned your lesson. Love, Daisy. P.S. I do love you deep down inside and sometimes I love you so much that I can't hide it. Really well done. Thank you. Really well done. Really Very well done. And so do you think um, Chris is old enough to write a letter? He is. Yeah. Want me to read it? Okay. Dear Mommy, I love you. Why can't we be together? Why don't you want to see me? When I think of you and Daddy not living together, I feel so sad. I do not understand why you got divorced. Sometimes I dream about Dad being sad, about not having you around. I wish that you didn't get a divorce. Love, Chris. Very good letter. Thank you. See, kids want to Very feel... Very good letter. Very kids good want letter. to feel responsible for the divorce because they think that that gives them some sense of control, that I can make them come back and do right. something like that. But they do. These, I know it doesn't look like they feel better at the moment, but the experience of being able to get it out and connect with you about it finally, tomorrow and the next day, they're going to walk lighter, and that sparkle in their eye is going to be back. Yeah. More and more. It doesn't mean the pain will go away. Right. And it doesn't mean that they still won't want their mother to come back. Correct. But at least it releases some of that burden. Do you feel a little better, Daisy? Do you think you feel a little better? Yeah. Do you? OK. You don't have to say it if you don't. <laughs> Maybe you'll feel a little better tomorrow. Feel a little better. Well, thank you, Jim. Thank you, thank for, you. for trying to do the right thing. Thank you for continuing to communicate with your children. And I think uh, this experience has let you know that, you know, the way to do it is when you're doing other things and not just let's now sit down and have a talk or not expect them to come to you right. and start the conversation. Yeah, because it's too heavy a burden for them. It's too much for them. Yeah. Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.